Today I'll be talking about the differences between soft light and hard light, what they are, and compare seven different lights at different price points to help you light yourself for your videos. Before I show what light systems I'll be comparing, I just want to quickly talk about what soft light is. I think the best way to explain it is having even light across your subject. And by even, I mean that there isn't an extreme difference between the highlights and the shadows, and the transition between the two is very soft and gradual. In this image, I'm using what I consider the softest light out of all the lights I'll be comparing today. The light is approximately 30 degrees off the center, and I'm facing away in the opposite direction to purposely try to create that shadow across my nose and the right side of my face. I just want to bring your attention to how little of the shadow you can see from my nose and how the highlight of the left side of my face gradually transitions into the shadow on the right side of my face. The lighting doesn't look like anything special until we look at this picture, which is one of the harsher light options I'll be comparing. There is a major shadow cast from my nose and the transition from the highlights to the shadows is well defined along my forehead, cheek, and neck. Of course, there is also a huge difference with how much shadow my body creates on the backdrop behind me. As is quite obvious from this image, hard light can easily be described as having a very defined highlight and shadow with a very clear transition line between the two. This is something you are probably very used to seeing when shooting videos and photo outside in direct sunlight. Something like in this photo, the sun is on the subject's face and the shadows created by her glasses and nose are very defined and well, harsh. There is little to no gradual transition between the highlight and the shadow. Generally speaking, for most regular lighting setups, the softer you can get your light, the more pleasing it will look. The way you get soft light is to increase the size of your light source, usually by diffusing your light with a modifier. You take your point source of light that would be quite hard alone and add a modifier spreading the light over a larger surface. Looking back at the earlier soft light example, the larger light source wraps around my nose and face which reduces the unwanted dark shadows. Now there's obviously a lot more to hard light and soft light, but I think that generally covers the basics. If you have any questions at all, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments below. I reply to everyone. Now moving on to the different lights I'll be comparing today. Starting from the cheapest setup and working our way up, we have a very basic Amazon lighting kit coming in at around $100. You get a set of two light bulbs, stands, and soft boxes. Next is the Falcon Eyes F7 portable light coming in at around $110. This is very compact, has a good output and battery life, and not only is it RGB, but it also has some cool lighting effects you can get creative with. Another Falcon Eyes product, the SO28TD. This light comes in at around $150 and is slightly larger than the F7. This is the light that I've been using for most of my videos when I'm recording in my smaller office because of its small footprint and because it's probably one of the softer lights you can get for its size given its unique design. I made a whole video on the SO28TD which you can watch right here if you want to know more specific details about it. Then we have my big light. The Godox VL150, which is a pretty big step up in price, coming in at around $340. And of course that's just for the light itself, with no modifier, which you will need for most scenarios when using this light. The last two lights are just the VL150 with a modifier. The first one being a 14 by 63 inch rectangular Godox softbox, which costs $55, and next probably one of the most well-known softboxes, the Aperture Light Dome 2, which is a parabolic softbox that is not on the cheap side coming in at $270, almost as much as the VL150 itself. So in total, the cost for the Godox rectangular softbox and the VL150 comes in at around $400, and the light dome and the VL150 come in at $610, by far the most expensive light on this list. The Godox I will be testing vertically as well as horizontally. It's worth mentioning that both the Godox and the light dome have two sheets of diffusion, while the Amazon light kit only has one. Having these two light sheets helps further soften the light, as well as helps spread out the light more evenly across the larger piece of diffusion. If the middle one wasn't there, you would get an uneven spread, and would likely get some hot spots in the middle. Also, because both these softboxes use two layers of diffusion, a more powerful light is needed to still get a decent amount of output. The more diffusion material there is, and the larger the area that the light is being spread over, the more powerful your light needs to be. This is why you need something as large as the VL150 and why that small F7 doesn't work as well. Although it does work, the light output is very minimal. So those are the lights I'll be testing. Leave a comment below indicating which light you think will be the softest and most appealing. And hit that like button if you guess right. 
You can also hit it if you get it wrong though. So I'm gonna show you the lights from what I think are the hardest moving to the softest. Here is light one. The shadows across my nose, right side of my face and neck are very defined, as is my shadow on the backdrop. Here is light two. The shadows across my nose and neck are still quite defined, but comparing it to the previous one, you can see it's starting to blur, including my silhouette on the backdrop. However, I think the shadow on the right side of my face is much darker than in the first light, which is interesting because I will say this, this light source is larger in surface area than the first. Light three further blurs that defined shadow highlight transition across my neck and slightly softens the nose shadow, although not by much. I would say though that the right side of my face is no longer as dark and the silhouette further loses its form. Here are the three in a quick burst, which really helps to see the softening occur. Before we go to light four, I wanna mention that I tried my very best to expose each light to the same output, but I wasn't perfect. The next one I'd say is quite a noticeable jump, a major drop in the definition of the shadow on my nose, neck and backdrop shadow, but the right side of my face is a little darker, as well as is my hair. However, this could be me underexposing the output by mistake. Here it is compared again to the other three before it. Light five is back to not being super dark and I think the shadows on my neck and face are quite similar, but the color looks better and the silhouette continues to become less extreme. Light six is another exposure mistake, but just my luck, it's because I overexposed the output. I also couldn't get a freeze frame of me in a similar position to the other comparisons. This was the closest one. Although I am looking at the camera, I would say the angle of my face is roughly the same as the previous ones and the highlight shadow shift across my face seems to be similar to the light before. I think I would say this one wraps around my face a little better though and the shadow side of my face looks a little brighter. There is very little left of the backdrop as well. And finally, the last light, number seven. What I would say is the most even lighting setup. The highlights aren't as hot as the one before it and I find the shift from highlight to shadow the most gradual with the least visible shadow on the backdrop but now with a little more definition in the shadow on my neck. Looking at this one now I'm really kicking myself for messing up the exposure from light 6 because I think it's harder to really judge which one is softer. But going back and forth I would say the shadow on the right side of my face stays the same for both while the highlight on number six is much brighter, so overall it's not as even. Here is all the lights seven to one, one to seven, and this set of still frames with me facing the camera. Once again, if you wanna make this fun, see if you can guess all of them right below in the comments. Starting with number one is the strongest light I own, the VL150. It's actually quite interesting because it's definitely the smallest light source on this list, creating the most defined shadow across my nose, neck, and silhouette, but when comparing it to light two and three directly, I feel as though the highlight across my face isn't as bright and the shadow on the right side of my face is brighter. Light two and three seem to be a little brighter in the highlights and much darker in the shadows. I wanna say it's just because it's the big light just having more output so it's able to brighten up the shadow, but then I would also assume for the highlights to be brighter, but they're not. The highlights are darker and the shadow is brighter. This kind of sounds like an attribute of soft light having a more even spread of light. Light number two is the compact and portable Falconize F7. And light three is the Falconize 28TD, the light I've been boasting for being so extremely soft for its size. The one I've been using for most of my videos in my small office, thinking I'm getting similar light output and conditions as my big light and modifier. While comparing the 28TD directly to the F7, the light across my face doesn't seem to be that much different to be honest. The next shadow and silhouette are less obvious, and I'd say there's at least a minor noticeable improvement overall across my face, but if I wasn't comparing them side by side, I think I'd have a very hard time telling the difference. Maybe the SO28 TD isn't as amazingly soft as I originally thought. It's always fun when I actually learn these things myself when making these test videos. Light number four is the cheap Amazon kit, making its way quite far up this list, which is great. It's the cheapest and you get quite a bit for what you buy but there are a few limitations. One, you can't control the power of the light output, and I wouldn't say it's the strongest. And it's also not by color, so you can't control how warm or how cool it is. It's stuck at 5,500 Kelvin, and I'm not sure how accurate that is. You can see comparing this light to every other one, it definitely has a green hue. Overall though, for someone who is just starting out, this is a great option. Number five is the vertical orientation of the Godox rectangular softbox. I think it looks quite a bit better than the previous three. The shadows are brightened up, the highlights aren't as hot, and the silhouette has lost a lot of its definition. 
but even though it's big, most of that size is vertical. So as far as trying to wrap the light across my face is a little bit more difficult given it's not that big horizontally. And now the second softest light on this list is the Light Dome 2. This is the one that I exposed too bright. I played around with exposure in post, but it changed the image too much, so I just left it as is. Given that the softbox is wider than the Godox when it's vertical, it only makes sense that the light would wrap around my face better and reduce the shadow from my nose and generally brighten up the shadow part of my face. And finally, for the softest and best light on this list, which may be cheating a little, is the rectangular Godox. Given how long it is, it's just able to wrap its light all around me with very even lighting and the silhouette is pretty much gone too. But two things of note. One, because now it's much wider, it's not able to spread its light vertically as well. The shadow on my neck is definitely more defined than in the light dome. And because the light covers a lot of me, it also brightens up a lot of my background. And to me, looking between the two, I would say I don't pop as much with the Godox as I do with the light dome. The light dome just seems to separate me more from the background, which I do like. This obstacle and generally just removing your silhouette from the background can easily be rectified by using a light behind you, which is something I always do and I'm doing right now to get that orange and blue background behind me. I'm actually using most of the lights in this comparison together in tandem. I have the VL150 with the light dome too. I have the SO28 TD behind me as a fill and hair light. On the other side here, I have the F7 as the orange backdrop, and then another RGB like for blue. So that is my light comparison video. If you learned anything at all, a quick like is always appreciated. And if I wasted your time, hit that dislike button twice for extra luck. If you feel like watching more of my tests and tutorials, YouTube thinks you will enjoy this video the most. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.